today I'm going to show you how to add 100 horsepower to your P-pumped Cummins with simply installing delivery valves in the pump just by removing these six delivery valve holders and installing some upgraded power-driven delivery valves. Follow along as we get this job done in a jiffy. That was kind of crappy. Today I'm going to show you how to add 100 horsepower to your P7100 pumped Cummins or your 12 valve Cummins engine. We're going to remove these six delivery valve holders, install a set of power driven diesel performance delivery valves, and instantly we're going to pick up around 100 horsepower depending on which size you put in the truck. Okay, so we're going to show you how to put delivery valves in your P pump, your P7100 pump. First thing you're going to need, these have a special spline, so you need the spline to delivery valve socket. If you don't have one, buy one with it when you're getting your delivery valves. The spline socket fits on here. Now these barrels can rotate slightly and that's how they adjust the calibration. They're held in by these little nuts that are torqued down, these little 14 millimeter nuts. My recommendation so that you don't risk breaking that loose is when you're breaking this loose, give it a firm swift hit with a, a half inch breaker bar when you're breaking these loose. So on the truck, it'll be easy because it's just gonna go. I have to hold the pump with a hand, but I like to break them loose in kind of a firm motion. Later, when we torque them down, we torque them to 84 foot-pounds, so they are kind of tight sometimes. So here we go. Oh! Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have to break them loose on the side here. Okay, this one's pretty tight, so we're gonna lay it on its side on the bench because we can. That one did not give up easily. There's a little bit of friction because there's an O-ring at the top that comes up. A lot of times that gets kind of cut on the threads when it's coming out. Now this is a new pump so the O-ring was pretty lubed. Now you want to kind of turn this over can you see the spring in here? There's a spring inside here that sits on top of the delivery valve. If you hold this spring in when you're coming out, nothing will fall out. That holds it all in there. And you take your new governor spring, or delivery valve, sorry. I like to use a magnet, a little pen magnet works great. Lift the old delivery valve out. Just like that. This one had 131s, which are a factory valve. So the delivery valve came out like this. The new one goes in the same way. If you have a 180 pump, the delivery valve will look almost like it's uh, inverted. When you put these in, look at the instructions, but the big end goes down on the power driven delivery valves. We also want to make sure there's not a little O-ring, sometimes there's a little metal sealing ring under here. We don't want to reuse that, so I'm going to glance in here and make sure there isn't a ring. There isn't on this one. If you really want to be careful, you can carefully reach down with your magnet and you can check. But you don't want to touch the top of that plunger and mar it up. Those things are lapped to millionths of an inch, which means you drop a magnet hard on it, you can mess it up. New delivery valve goes in, drops straight down like that. This spring goes right onto the top of the delivery valve in the middle. Indexes. And we want to put our new O-ring on there. I'm not going to change it on this one because this is a brand new O-ring, so we just had this pump apart but you would put a new O-ring and you want to lube it a little bit with some WD-40 or engine oil, or even a tiny bit of uh, grease some guys will use, but. And I'm gonna get this down snug. This isn't the final torque. The initial torque spec is to 25 foot-pounds. So you just go and get it pretty good and firm just so that it's clean. Move on to the next one. When we get done, we'll torque all of them with the torque wrench. So next one, we're gonna break it loose. Okay, now that we've got all the delivery valves swapped, 
Remember, fish out these little copper crush washers. If you have a 160 or 175 horse truck, it has these, basically a 94, 95. 96 and newer, if it's the original pump, shouldn't have these little ceiling washers. These are one-time use crush washer. If you try to reuse them under delivery valves, most likely your truck's gonna have a little bit of a lope and a miss at idle. So don't leave these in there. Like I did on the first two, and then I noticed them on the third one, and I went, oh shoot. So make sure you get all six of these out. Now to torque these, you need a torque wrench. Your initial torque is 25 foot-pounds. That's just to kind of get everything seated. So 20, and then in one motion, we want to go to 80 foot-pounds. That's it, it's done. Repeat on all six, put your lines back on, put your air horn back on, fire your truck up. Generally, when you go bigger on the delivery valve, the idle will drop a tiny bit. So if you don't know how to set your idle, it's right back here on the pump. There's a 10 millimeter screw that th throttles up to hit the, uh, it throttles up, up, raises the idle, down goes down, there's a little jam nut on the bottom, so you gotta reach in there with the 10 millimeter open end wrench to loosen the bottom nut and then reach in on the top and raise it to raise the idle or drop it down to drop your idle a little bit and uh, you should be ready to rock. Repeat on all six, slam dunk, easy 100 horsepower. Thanks guys.